What would Scarlet Witch look like if she was a raccoon? Let's find out. For this video, I will be taking the magical Scarlet Witch and fusing her with the woodland cunning of a raccoon. When coming up with the design of how I wanted her to look, I was debating making her a more cutesy raccoon or if I wanted her to be more anthropomorphic, but I decided to lean more for a humanoid anthropomorphic style and the first thing that came to my mind was Sly Cooper and Carmelita Fox from the Sly Cooper video games. So technically this is going to be a Sly Cooper mashup with Carmelita Fox mashed up with Scarlet Witch. Once I was settled on her design, I built her base out of an ultralight clay and then used an armature wire to create her skeletal frame. The pose that I decided to go with was her you will moment from the endgame movie when she's raising up the rocks and the rubble right as she's about to attack Thanos. Once her pose is basically where I want it, then I start to flush her out a little bit so she starts to look a little less like a stick figure. For this sculpt, I will be using a base of ultralight clay, and for the actual sculpting part, I use for the first time Cosclay Sculpt, and I have to say that I really like this clay. It blends really nicely, and I love the flexibility that it has once it's fully baked. Though this is technically a raccoon and not an actual human, this is my first time ever really doing more human anatomy type sculpts and I really think I did a pretty good job for never having done human anatomy before. Now that her basic body shape is in place, I start to add some clothing details by taking some strips of cosplay and creating that v-neck shape. Next to create that natural look where the folds and wrinkles would be in her pants, I take some little clay noodles and I blend them in where I feel like would be most natural. To make it look like she's not wearing a giant onesie, I take another strip of clay and I wrap it around her waist to create the hem of her shirt. Next, using my pointy hook shaped tool, I create that fur texture. For the lacing detailing of her shirt, I was using this ball tool to create that look of her vest that she wears, but I had made it all the way down probably to the almost bottom of her shirt and realized I don't like the way this is looking. So I started over, I cleaned it all up and just took some small little tiny clay noodles and blended it in to create that stitching look. Then, using some really long clay noodles, I finished the detailing of her vest. Next, I take another strip of clay and I wrap it around the top part of her calf to give her some boots, even though technically raccoons don't really need boots, but hey, she's a stylish raccoon. She needs her boots. And before I put her in the oven for her first bake, I used some ultralight clay to bulk out her tail. When she's out of the oven and cooled down, I add some bacon bond to the ultralight clay, cover her up in some more cos clay, and then add some more fur texture. She can't really do magic without her arms and hands, so next I start to add some cos clay to the armature wire set aside for her arms. For her hands, I just take some balls of clay and I cut some little slits in it for her fingers and I just start to shape them. This takes me a really long time, so I'm just going to zip right through this so you don't have to watch the whole process. Once I was happy with the shape of her hands, I place them on her body where they would be the most handy and then I give her some fur texture detailing. Moving on to her jacket, I take some rolled out pieces of clay and I wrap them around her torso to create the look of that duster jacket that she wears. Then I take some collared shaped pieces of clay and place them right where the collar of her jacket would go. Once the detailing of the top portion of her jacket was done, I start to take some more strips of clay and create the length of her jacket. And because she has a tail in this version of Scarlet Witch, I had to create a split in the back of her jacket to make it look a little bit more realistic. To create the 
detailing of the jacket, I just use a needlepoint tool to create the seams. And then I also use the texture on one of my other like spoon clay tools to create that fabric texture of her jacket. And before I put her in for her second baking, I take some pre-baked pieces of clay in claw-like shapes to create the claws of her fingers. Last but not least, she needs a head, so I start with a ball of clay and I just start to create that raccoon-shaped face that a raccoon would have by giving her tufts of fur on the side of her face, a snout, and some ears. To create her eyes, I just used this ball tool and created some sockets and gave her some eyeballs and blended it in. Next, I take some eyebrow shaped pieces of clay and give her kind of this angry face that just says, you will remember me after this. Then I finished her off by shaping her mouth and then giving her a little nose at the end of the tip of her snout. To add a little bit of the angry look, I just shape out some teeth just a little bit to give her that look that she's gritting her teeth and growling. Then I take my pointy hook shaped tool and create that fur texture around the front and back of her head. I was really on the fence of whether I was going to give her actual hair, but I just didn't feel like it looked like Scarlet Witch without it, so here I am adding some little tufts of hair to her head. Next, I add some clay to the base to give it that rocky and dirty terrain texture. And the easiest way for me to do that was just to take a ball of aluminum foil to create that rock texture. This can also be done with a rock, but I did not have one handy. Moving on to the painting, I start with the darkest gray to create that mask look around her face. And then I go to the different lighter shades of gray that would go around the other parts of her fur. Then I finish off painting her fur by painting the eyebrows and her snout white while also including her eyeballs and her teeth. While I'm waiting for the white paint to dry, I paint her pants and her boots black. Then I take this nice bright red and start painting the vest and parts of her jacket. Next, I paint with this burgundy maroon-like color to finish off the rest of her jacket. Moving on to her tail, I paint it the same gray color as the rest of her fur and then use a dark gray blackish color for the stripes. I paint her hair a reddish brown color to get as close to the Scarlet Witch look as I can and then dry brush some lighter browns on top to add some depth. To finish off her I am using magic and I am angry face, I paint her eyes this bright red color and then top it off with some little white dots in the corners of her eyes to add a little bit of life. Next I move on to the terrain and I paint it a various amounts of dirt and rock type colors. Lastly, she needs to be using the magic so I take some translucent clay and I just place some little wispy noodles around her hands and also around the rocky terrain to create that illusion that she is raising these rocks and rubbles from the ground as she's about to attack. Lastly, before I put her in for her final bake, I use a couple of my tools to add a little bit of texture to that magical wispiness. And lastly, I paint all the magical areas with this reddish pink alcohol ink and now I think she's ready for the glamour shots. This is a little different from my normal sculpts, but I had an absolute blast making it and I look forward to making my next one. If you enjoyed the video, maybe tap the like button, subscribe, and let me know in the comments if there's a mashup you'd like to see in the future.
Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.